Properly gripping your firearm is the key to accuracy and being able to control your recoil. Now we've got an absolutely special guest with us today who's going to share her secrets on how she coaches people to improve their grip. Hello, friends and lovers. This is Dave Trillo, and you're listening to the Ammunition Guide podcast brought to you by none other than Ammo.com. Today, we've got a very special guest with us who's going to teach us how to hold our handguns correctly, and I don't just mean pointing it in the right direction. Chris, why don't you introduce Maureen a little more intelligently than I just did? Dave, no problem. I appreciate it. Uh, Today, we've got Maureen San Giorgio. Am I pronouncing that right? You're correct. You got it. Awesome. We've got Maureen with us today. Uh, She is an NRA certified instructor as well as an RSO. Uh, She's written multiple articles for the NRA and American Rifleman and things like that. And I actually found her, if you're a reloading fanatic like me, on the Blue Press. Now that is Dylan Precision's uh, circular that they put out every month. And I noticed that she might have mentioned a certain ammunition company, that being ammo.com. And if you want to get a free $20 off coupon, make sure you click that link down in the description or the pinned comment. Get your $20 off ammo so you can get out to the range and practice your grip. Uh, But Maureen, why don't you tell us a little bit more about yourself? Sure. Um, Chris, thank you so much for inviting me to participate in this podcast. I really appreciate it. Of course. No, it's great. And yes, um, I, uh, I'm an NRA certified firearm instructor. I'm certified in rifle and pistol, and I'm also an NRA certified range safety officer. And I, I used to go shooting with my dad years ago. And then when he passed on, none of the rest of my family wanted his gun. So I took them all. I took every one of them. Nice. I would. And then I joined, <laughs> I think so. And then I joined a uh, women's shooting league, a girl and a gun. And one of the other uh, gals that was there at the range said, boy, whatever we hand you, you pick up and you shoot. You should look into maybe being an instructor. So I uh, started my testing for that. And then I qualified. And that's something I encourage both men and women to look into um, uh, becoming uh, an instructor or at least a range safety officer, because people like to shoot. They really do. it's It's a growing field right now. There are a lot of gun owners in this country. So I highly recommend it. Maureen, I'd love to do that, but I'm worried I'm, I'm too much of a klutz to be of any use to anyone. How much natural talent did you bring to the table? Do you feel like you, you had a gift that let you become an RSO more naturally than me? No, no. Honestly, I just wanted to mainly teach beginner females, young women that were fearful and how to properly, safely handle a firearm. That's what really got me interested in the first place, because one of my instructors at that time, he was a, um, a Green Beret. And he said, you know, women, oh, yeah. He said, women want to learn from women. And he said something similar to the other gals. No matter what I hand you, you're willing to shoot it. So that would be my first suggestion. Are you open minded, willing to try just about anything? And that's that's something that we could talk about today. If you have proper grip, you could handle just about any caliber firearm. You don't have to be intimidated by it. Now, I know that uh, a lot of people or, you know, a lot of things that, you know, you read maybe on the Internet or things like that are just like, you know, really like white knuckle that thing, rip it as hard as you can, uh, that type of thing. When you're instructing somebody who maybe has a weaker grip, what advice do you give them as far as how hard you're supposed to grip this thing? Well, actually, you're absolutely right. You should grip a handgun as as firmly as possible. If you like, I could go into the mechanics of it now. Absolutely. Go for it. So the handgun that I have here is a Smith & Wesson M&P shield. And if we were meeting face to face, I would show you how it's, it's empty and I drop the mag. So you see that there's nothing in it. It's very safe. And the first tip that I always give is to form your hand into like a cup shape, like almost like the letter C. And you want to grip as high up on the back strap as possible. Now on the left hand side, if you're left handed, you'll see this is a really good grip here. You want to cover as much what we call real estate of the gun as possible. So you want your left thumb in front of your right thumb and you'll see in the front, you don't want any space. 
This is the trigger guard here. This is the trigger. You don't want any space. You want to grip that as, as much as possible. And on the right hand side, you'll see this is the back strap. Now, the Smith & Wesson M&P Shield, it's a 380 caliber, which I recommend chambered in 380 if someone is just starting and they may have small hands, weak hands, maybe they're older, maybe they have some type of health issues. This is a wonderful handgun. It's very easy to rack the slide, very easy to drop the magazine. It has several external safeties. As you can see here, Here's one of the external safeties. It's ambidextrous, so it's on both sides. And it has another safety here, so you have to squeeze that in order to eject the cartridge. And you want to chalk up as far as possible. You don't want any space in here. So this would be a good grip right here. Left thumb in front of right thumb. And honestly, like I said, if, if you Let's put in the time and you work on strengthening the grip and having a very firm grip. You could shoot just about any caliber, but I recommend I start my students on a 22. Now, this is something else that I recommend. If someone has a weak grip, small hands, they're just starting, you can't go wrong with the revolver. Now, this was the first 22 I shot. This is a really old gun, I have to admit. This gun is about about 60, 62 years old. It's a high standard nine shot. People come to my house and they don't believe me. They put straws in. <laughs> <laughs> they want to count the holes in the, in the cylinder to make sure it really is nine, but it really is nine. So that would be another tip is to start on a revolver. It's very, very easy. You're not racking the slide. Okay. Like, like with the semi-auto, you're not slamming up the magazine. You just load the cylinder. It's a single action, so you'll have to cock it yourself and you're ready to go. Very, very simple and easy to use. 22 revolver, you can't go wrong when you're just starting out. You know, it's interesting. You said that good grip can, can let even a, a smaller shooter handle larger cartridges. Uh, 32, 380, 22 LR, goodness forbid. Uh, those are generally advised for, for lady shooters and shooters with small frames. Would you right. advise, though, developing your skills to a point where you can handle the larger rounds? Oh, ab absolutely. And, and I went into that a little bit in my article. Uh, and I have it right here, weak hands, no worries. And you see the gal that in, in the model that's holding, she's holding my Smith & Wesson M&P Shield EZ. I mean, it's called EZ for a reason. It is easy to rack the slide and to load it. But yes, if you do some exercises, uh, we talked about using a gripper. We talked about squeezing. I said we. I talked about squeezing a tennis ball. Uh, you can do reverse curls, okay? Instead of doing the normal curls like this, let me get up so you can see. You would do reverse curls like this. There's a lot of exercises you can do to build your hand, your forearm grip. There, there's two elements going on here, as you guys well know. There's a little explosion going on every time you shoot a gun. So either the gun is going to absorb that recoil or it's going to be you, your hand, your wrist, your forearm. It's going to be one or the other. So if you have a strong grip and you work on strengthening that grip, then you're going to have better control and you can move up in caliber. There's really no limitations. What got me even thinking about pitching an article like this is um, – as a handgun instructor, I volunteer my time at several ranges in the area. I live in Pennsylvania. And this woman came up to me. It was a ladies day shoot. I found out later she was 84 years old. Oh, wow. I know, really. I mean, she had like a walker and everything. I was like, this broad is serious. She wants to <laughs> learn how to shoot. She could barely take a step. But you know what? She was there for that ladies day shoot. And um, I was telling her, I said, I think I'd like to start you on my 22. And she absolutely loved it. So you know what? If a woman in her 80s could shoot a 22, anybody could. Chris would have given her his 454 Casul. <laughs> <laughs> I oh, heard about the, that. I want to shoot that. A friend of mine has one. <laughs> no, that would be really cool. But Dave, you're the revolver guy here. We all know that. Well, that's funny. Marine kicked a, a little hornet's nest between us. Chris advises semi-automatics for their obvious advantages, larger magazine capacity, speed of reloading, uh, lighter trigger pull. 
I prefer revolvers because they look cool. What well, would you prefer for, for someone who's never even thought of owning a handgun before, Maureen? Well, you know, that's a tough one. Either a 22, re- it comes out to a semi-auto or a revolver. I would have to stick with the revolver because they're very simple to operate, simple to load. You rarely hear of any malfunctions, any issues with them. But for sheer simplicity, I'm with you, Dave. It would have to be a revolver. And there's plenty of them, 22s. Oh. And another tip I like to share with your listeners, this is a myth. This is, I'm going to do some myth busting here. The heavier the gun, the better it is for you. When you shoot a heavy handgun, whether it's a revolver like Bertha or a semi-auto, that sheer weight absorbs the recoil. So that's why I tell people, start out with the 22, move yourself up in caliber, a higher, higher pound weight gun. My only caution there is do the research and check the pound trigger pull. Um, The lighter pound trigger pull, the better. Because if you're really jerking that trigger, you're going to affect your shot pattern, your cluster. You're going to affect that. Whenever you pull, squeeze that trigger, squeeze it gently and slowly. Don't jerk that trigger. And the higher pound trigger pull, the more chance you're going to have of jerking the trigger. You don't want to do that. You want to gently squeeze it. You know, I think that's a great point that you made there, Maureen. And it's something that I've had, you know, of course, I'm not a certified instructor, but I have, you know, kind of introduced some people to firearms. And everybody likes to think like, oh, I need to get like this, this tiny little Glock 26 here, the subcompact. Because they think that it's like, oh, it's going to be easier to handle because it's smaller. Just well, the opposite. Exactly. It's, it's a big myth. You are absolutely right. It's a big myth. Um, I, I hate to say it, but some people will look at a gun and say, oh, it's pink and it's lilac and it's small. I'm going to buy that for mm-hmm. their ECC, Everyday Concealed Carry. I had this one student at a range. Oh, my God. She showed up with this pretty little lilac gun and she said, well, it looks cute and I could fit it. No problem. I'm not printing. No one could see I'm carrying. I'm like, OK, let's see where this goes. She I gave her the tips as best I could. She shot that gun maybe two or three times. She threw it up in the air, ran around, grabbed it as it came down and threw it at my feet and said, that's it. I'm done. And she ran to her car. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So I'm standing there like, oh, my God, what just happened here? She threw the gun at my feet and she ran to her car. Myth busting. The small, lightweight guns are jumpy. Yes. They're more difficult to shoot. They're more difficult to control because there is nothing absorbing the recoil. There's a little explosion that happens whenever you shoot a gun. Okay. The little explosion happens to eject that cartridge. So either the gun is going to absorb it or you are with your hand and your forearm. Sounds like yeah. you got a free gun out of the ordeal. Can't beat that. No, I think oh, it you... was terrifying, let me tell you. Oh, I bet. Well, you make a really good point. You know, I want to illustrate here is you're basically creating a lever, and this is the fulcrum of the lever here. And what happens right. when you fire the gun is it's going to push back. And right. that's what we're trying to fight against. And I'm doing this backwards because I'm not left-handed, but uh You know, that's what we're trying to fight against, that recoil uh, from here on up. And so you talked about a couple of exercises that you can do, like reverse curls, things like that, getting like a gripper. Uh, Is there anything else that you would recommend for maybe new shooters who or maybe people elderly or small frame people who maybe need to work on that grip strength a little more? Grippers, you can get them at uh, any sporting goods store. You can get them at Walmart. I got mine at Dick's Sporting Goods, Uh, squeezing a tennis ball, reverse curls. And I also work on a student's stance to work on their core. If you build your core, like doing some crunches and stuff like that, your stance is important too. Not as important as grip and trigger control. Uh, But if you could work on your core, do some crunches, stuff like that, work out with the barbell, that'll help your stance. But Maureen, you touched on something interesting earlier when you mentioned the color of that jumpy lady's gun. (laughs) Uh, Chris Chris and I would advise any guy not to get, you know, Punisher skull grips and engrave intimidating quotes on their on their firearms barrel because uh, if they ever, God forbid, do have to use their firearm in a defensive shooting, the jury's not going to like seeing the skull grips. Uh, to that end, a, a lavender gun is hardly as threatening. But w- what would you tell a lady who's thinking maybe she has to color coordinate her handgun to her to her outfit? This is where I hurt people's feelings, but you know what? I don't care anymore. At my age, I just, I just want to help people. So I'm very honest. 
I tell them, if you're interested in a gun, any type of a handgun, a semi-auto or a revolver, go to a range, rent it before you buy it. Um, I personally, I do like the larger, heavier guns. As I'm getting older, my grip is fading. So I'm doing more exercises now than I did before. Don't look at the color. Don't look at the configuration. Look at the size. Make sure it's at least maybe about three, four inch barrel and, and do the research. How many ounces does it weigh? And if, if you really want to be color coordinated, if that's important to you, then fine. If that means you're going to go out and purchase a firearm rather than not, then yes, go out and get it. And that's another thing I tell some of my students, I, I move them up in caliber, but I notice they go back to a 22. And you know what? I, and once again, I'm being brutally honest here. A 22 caliber has the lowest percentage, what's called one shot drop rate. You're going to have to keep firing 22 rounds into the bad guy to stop him. But if that's the only caliber you want to buy and that's the caliber you shoot best in, then go right ahead. Purchase the 22. I do not recommend it for self-defense. I recommend at least a 380, like the, the like this one here, the MMP shield, at least the 380 on up. Nine millimeter, 40, 45 cal would be best. And um, uh, I just took a self-defense course a few weeks ago and the instructor brought up a very good point. If you're thinking about uh, everyday concealed carry, try to get something with as few external safeties as possible. I bought this uh, Smith & Wesson MMP shield because frankly, my students asked me to do it. They wanted something between a 22 and my nine millimeter. My everyday Glock is a Glock, everyday carry is Glock 19 Gen 5. The reason why I picked that is because there's no external safeties. In a self-defense life and death situation, a millisecond can make a difference. And with a gun like this, you have to squeeze that, you have to disengage that safety. But with my Glock 19 Gen 5 or any handgun that doesn't have these external safeties, there's nothing to do. You just pull and you shoot. You bring up a good point, you know, about uh, things that you have to overcome uh, as far as, you know, with EDC and, and things of that nature. But one thing that I really wanted to hit on that you got to uh, was renting before you buy. Mm -hmm. I remember I, the first handgun I purchased, and this is not a knock on the company, was a Taurus PT709S. I okay. couldn't shoot that thing for nothing. Uh, it was the, oh. it just was not for me. Went and oh. got myself one of these instead. This is a Kimber Custom 2, TLE Custom 2, actually. Uh, very nice handgun. A lot heavier. Uh, you know, like you talked about, it's a 1911, so it's all steel. Yep. And yep. I, a lot of people love shooting this handgun and say that they shoot it better. And I think that that's so important is going and trying before you buy. I think that's something that they'll save you a lot of money in the long run. Oh, absolutely. I have a Kimber 1911. Mm -hmm. And um, I have to admit, it was a little more than I wanted to pay for it. But thank God, because I'm a member of a women's shooting league, I shoot with a gal who just got a job at a gun store. I'm like, you're my new best friend now. Nice. You know? <laughs> Can you? Cut me a break and take care of me. And she did. She did. She knocked off a couple bucks. So that was good. But now I have to say this. Um, two buddies of mine that I used to shoot with, now uh, they're mainly gunsmiths. They don't even get to the range that much anymore. They tell me they repair all the brand names, almost the same percentage. Like say um, Taurus has a, a large selection of, of budget-friendly handguns and Kimber would be at the higher end. I said, does, does it really matter? He said, Maureen, I have worked on just as many Kimbers as I have a Taurus or a SAR or anything that uh, has a, a good budget-friendly collection to choose from. Oh, and another thing that I just thought of, um, I found a little bit with my Kimber, not so much with the others, certain manufacturers like certain brand names and certain grain weight for ammo. A friend of mine is a competitive shooter. She said, try bumping up to 124 grain. Mm -hmm. And I did, and my cluster got even smaller. And from what I understand, the weight of that, I mean, your ammo.com, you could probably talk for a half hour more than me. The weight of that, once again, helps on reducing the recoil. But now that's the one handgun, the Glock 19 Gen 5. You have to try different manufacturers and different weights to see what your gun likes the best. It's it's a point of confusion for a lot of newer shooters that they go 115, mm -hmm. 124, 147, and I have to explain how recoil energy is the product of multiple factors and really only testing testing that ammo and your specific handgun is the only way to get any real sense of how it performs. 
Uh, Chris and I are both of the uh, 12 gauge school of home defense. I know obviously a handgun is your only option for every day carry, but would you advise uh, solely relying on that handgun for all self-defense scenarios or keeping a, uh, a little 12 or a 20 at your bed stand for, for home encounters? Well, I've written about this and the experts, the self-defense experts that I interviewed were kind of in the middle. Uh, when, when you're talking about a 12 gauge or any type of shotgun, 20, it's just the opposite. The caliber is handguns versus shotguns. The higher the number, the easier it is to shoot. Um, I have a few shotguns in the house and, you know, they're pump action. When you hear that, ch -ch, if someone's still going to come in, you know, they deserve to get shot, as they say. Yeah. Uh, what I like about shotguns for home self-defense is it's a very wide spray. You're hearing the very wide spray. In a panic situation, it's nighttime, you can turn your head, close your eyes, and chances are you're going to hit your target because of that wide spray. Now, that said, I interviewed another self-defense expert, and he said, yes, but some people are uncomfortable shooting a shotgun, and they would rather have one hand shooting, the other hand pushing their family away, pushing the loved ones in a closet, something like that. You can't do that with a shotgun. You need two hands. You need two hands. Now, that, that brings me to another point I brought up in my article. Rehearse, rehearse, rehearse. Pretend someone, the bad guy is breaking into your home. What are you going to do? In a panic self-defense situation, chances are your muscle memory is going to kick in, but you're going to forget about half of what you've learned. Would you rather shoot a shotgun? Then you go right ahead. Would you rather have one hand pushing family away, pushing, telling them what room to go in while you're defending yourself? Well, then you do that. I say rehearse and see what works best for you. Me, I like the shotguns. You know, I think you could just butt stock your, your family into the, into the closet if you need to. So and you know, <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Uh, I, I understand your point there, you know, having that versatility of having, you know, possibly, you know, a flashlight in one hand and, you know, your firearm in the other with right. something like this. Uh, right. Or if you don't have a weapons mounted light or something along those lines could give you a lot of, you know, latitude as far as target acquisition or doing whatever you need to do to manipulate the situation to your benefit. Right. Absolutely. I say practice, see what works best for you. There's no right or wrong here. What's important is you do your best to neutral, neutralize the threat, call 911. And uh, I also recommend people look into the uh, Castle Doctrine laws in their state. But that's one of the tips I hear over and over again. Identify yourself, call so they're sending medical attention, then hang up the phone. Don't say another word. Awesome. Well, let's uh, go ahead and close this out here. Uh, a couple things. Uh, Maureen, what are your final points you'd like to, to hit home on, you know, for people who maybe need to work on their grip strength or maybe you're scared of firearms, things like that? What would be some things they can do to kind of get themselves ready for that first trip to the range? First of all, I would put myself in the mindset to be open minded. The troubles I've had with students, male or female, uh, they want to automatically go to a very high caliber very quickly. And the ones that are humble and down to earth are like, OK, you're the instructor. You tell me what I need to do start with the 22. And I would recommend a revolver because very, very little recoil. Uh, honestly, with, with any type of a handgun with the 22, start with that. And absolutely have in your mind, I, I want to be able to practice. The, the experts I interview recommend at least an hour every two weeks. So it's like anything else, you have to put in the time and the effort. It takes a while to get good at it. And then when you see your shot pattern, is getting smaller and smaller. You want it about the size of your fist. When you see your shot pattern, that pattern is getting about that size. That's how you know you're ready to move up in caliber. And, and uh, some people, uh, I've had them, they don't hit paper for two weeks. Other times they, they hit it right away and they move up very quickly to each his own. It's whatever you find is working for you. And rent before you buy, rent before you buy. There's so many different grips so many different angles and widths on, on uh, handguns, especially semi-autos. Uh, I had a friend of mine, she's getting ready to move into competition shooting. She doesn't like my Glock. She's a much better shot than me and she doesn't like my Glock. She said, it's too wide, it hurts the bones in my hand. She shot it for 15 minutes. She said, that's it, I'm done, thank you. But I like it a lot, so try before you buy. Awesome advice to say the least. If uh, now, if people want to get in touch with you, what would be the best way? Oh, they could email me got to be fit at AOL.com G O T the numeral two, the letters B F I T at AOL.com. I'd be happy to answer any questions.
Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us, Maureen. It was a pleasure. And as always, we'll see you out on the range.